All right, planter fishing is oftentimes looked at as a very difficult way of fishing. And I think it's just because people have the wrong idea. They don't really understand it completely and it looks complicated, but really it's not. Um, I never leave the house without planters. When I'm going offshore fishing, there's always planters on the boat. And um, you know, it depends on, depending on what fish I'm targeting in specific, uh, Sometimes I, sometimes the plan is to run them all day, and sometimes I use them as a way to uh, get the bite going when when other fishing is slow. Um, but regardless, there are three methods of planer fishing. I would say the majority of people don't know about all three methods, and um, therefore they don't give planer fishing a try. And I, I think it's a mistake. I think I think everybody should learn how to use planers and add it to your arsenal and uh, I think you'll become a better fisherman when you start using these methods. So uh, planter fishing has been around for a long time, but there, have been, there are some methods that are newer and uh, in my opinion work better and provide uh, a funner experience. But all methods work and I'm gonna go over all three methods today, uh, start to finish everything you need to know about them. And um, I encourage you to either try all three and see which one works for you or just pick one that uh, you think uh, looks the best and and give it a shot and I think you'll start catching more fish when you when you incorporate this into your into your fishing tactics All right, I'm out in an area where I want to start putting out baits um, I think some king mackerel are around here. I'm working some on the on the sonar. So um, Do me a favor. I want to challenge you guys to something if if you find this video helpful in any way if you learn something Do me a favor hit that subscribe button uh, You know, I, I want to grow this channel. I need you guys help to do that and uh so if you feel like you learned something, if this was educational, you feel like you can now go out and use these methods to your advantage, hit that subscribe button for me, please. Thank you. Okay, so the first method we're gonna use is the inline planer um, that is non-removable. Non so basically, you're gonna put the planer out, and once that, when you're reeling in a fish, once that planer comes back to the rod tip, the last, uh, the leader, you're gonna hand line it in. So that sounds more difficult than it really is, I promise you. It's actually easier than reeling in a fish by, uh, by rod and reel. Um, but, you know, it's not for everybody. But I do encourage everybody to give it a shot just to try it and, and uh, see if they like it. Um, it's very effective. I mean, it works very well. Um, but it's important to also have gloves on the boat when you're doing this. So um, the equipment we're using... This is a Penn Squall um, 50 LD lever drag. Um, it's got 80 pound Power Pro, 80 pound braid, doesn't matter what kind, what brand. But you wanna use 80 pound line here because there's gonna be a lot of resistance on these planers and uh, you need to have heavy line. Uh, to also, when, when a fish uh, strikes, uh, there's a lot of resistance, a lot of pressure on that line. So 80 pound is the minimum. Um, it's also what I recommend. You can go up to like a hundred pound if you want. Um, but also, um, planter fishing is not spinning is not is not time for spinning reels. They're just not designed for that much constant pressure. This uh, conventional reel is is good enough to get me through about number one through number six planter, which is all I really use. So um, if you're looking for a possible reel, the Pen Squall 50 will be fine. Also, a Shimano TLD 25 will work. Um, but what's more realistic is you actually get up to like a 30 wide uh, or a 50 wide conventional reel. Um, and that's, that's more realistic, but this certainly works. Um, what you're gonna have is uh, on, the end of your, on the end of your braided line, you're gonna have a snap swivel. And that snap swivel, for demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna use a number one planer. Now this is the planer for those that don't really know what a planer looks like. Um, in a tr in a set position going through the water, this is how it's trolling. So the line, the main line is connected here, and it's coming down at a 45 degree angle. This is swimming through the water like this, and then your leader is coming off of this uh, part right here, and it goes to your lure. When the fish bites, the leader trips, the planer trips, and now there's no resistance. Now it's it's streamlined going through the water, and uh, you're able to fight that fish without fighting the planer itself. So what you're gonna do is the snap swivel connected to your rod and reel, you're gonna connect it to this, this ring here that's on the planer already. 
So we're going to go ahead and snap that on. Close that up. And this swivel, this swivel here is important that um, you use a heavy duty swivel. This is a 300 pound swivel. Um, again, there's a lot of resistance, so just use a heavy duty swivel. You don't want to lose your planer, your whole planer set up when a fish, when a fish bites. See, that's the last thing you want. So that's ready to go. Now, the lure, for demonstration purposes, I just have a Clark spoon, which works re really good for a schooly kingfish. And uh, the smaller ones are great on Spanish mackerel, bonita, stuff like that. Uh, but you're going to want to keep your leader organized on a uh, leader wheel or a yo-yo. Um, they work really good. And that, that, that way, what I have here is I have 50 pound uh, leader, 50 pound mono leader, and 100 feet. 100 feet is what I use on all my planer setups. It, it's perfect for me. I get a lot of strikes and, uh, and that's really that. So what you're gonna do now is you're gonna put the boat in gear and you're gonna send your lure out. Um, and when you run out to the end here, you're gonna take this snap swivel tied to the under, other end of your leader and you're gonna hook that up to your planer. So we're gonna go ahead and, sh and show you that. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and send the uh, the lure out. Careful when it gets to the end that you don't accidentally let go of that line. There we go. So we're to the end here. Gonna take this snap swivel, open it up. And hook it to your pointer right here on the top. So now, so now you're in line. So in the set position, it's like this. And when the fish bites, it trips and it goes and it streamlines to the water, just like that. So to set this bait out, I'm just gonna put your line in free spool, drop it down, give it some slack and let that weight take it down a little bit. And there you go. You're gonna wanna set out your planers. Um, if you're fishing two planers, you're gonna wanna put the, the lighter planer out first and farther from the boat. I like to go about 50 to 100 feet. You know, you can you can bring it in, see how it's swimming, see the angle that it's swimming down, and and adjust from there. All right, we're going about six miles per hour. Our planer's out. It's set. You want the planer to be in its set position, and just enough drag to where it's not coming off. Barely. You want it. You want it to be able to almost creep off once in a while when it hits when you hit a wave or something. But that's where you want. So what's going to happen now? is when a fish strikes, you're gonna see the resistance come off the rod tip and then it's gonna go back down. So it's gonna look like it slacks for a second and then goes back down. What you're gonna to wanna to do right away is back off the drag a little bit. Let the fish run a little bit. And uh, after you let him run a little bit, then you can bring the drag back up to where you need it. But um, planter fishing is all about um, being prepared for the bite. You wanna be close to the rod, that way you can kind of back the drag off immediately. And when it comes to hand lining that fish in, um, when it comes to the strike, you're gonna wanna uh, just get on it as quickly as possible. So we're gonna go ahead and assume at this point that we had a fish strike. So when the planters trip, you're gonna fight this fish. You're gonna go ahead and fight the fish. You know, right now, everything's fine because the planter there's still line before the planter gets here but as soon as the planter gets to the boat at this point the planter as you can see it's to the rod tip okay so at this point you're gonna have to hand line the fish the rest of the way so with gloves on preferably you're gonna pull 
the line with your hands, right? And if you can, feed the line back into the water, okay? Back into the water. Because that's gonna keep the, the line from tangling up inside the boat and around your feet. And also, if the fish decides to run and you have to let go of the line, you don't have to worry about the line getting stuck on um, anything in the boat and then that line snapping. As long as that line's back in the water, he can keep swimming and running and, and you can keep fighting that fish and get another chance at him. So you're gonna pull it up just like that, hand line, hand line, hand line. And this, I'm telling you, this is, this is very easy actually. And get to the boat, unhook the fish, throw the lure back out, and you're fishing again. It's, it's literally that simple planter fishing. It's uh, that right there is the uh, method that's been around for the longest. People have been using it for years and years and years. It's very effective. It's very fast. The, the fight is very fast. You get a king mackerel on or something, you know, even a 30 pound king mackerel, you'd be surprised how easy it is to just pull it in by hand and just get it to the boat. Um, and that's really it, you know? And then um, um, this, this, in my opinion, is the least sporty out of the three methods because it's, uh, you know, hand lining isn't the sportiest thing. I'd rather fight it right rod and reel. But if you're out here just trying to put meat in the freezer, this is absolutely an extremely effective way of doing that. So um, this personal method, if you have any questions about it, uh, you know, definitely comment below and, and let me know. I'll answer anything I can. But that's really it. Just make sure you have 80 pound braid on your reel. Uh, make sure you have 100 feet of, of uh, leader, which I use 50 pound. Um, put your lure and have a have a snap swivel on each side. Hook it to your planer, send it down. Make sure it's engaged. Okay, make sure your planer's engaged. And uh, an easy way to engage the planer is to pull the planer next to you, drop it in the water real quick, and let that weight drop. As soon as that weight starts to drop down below the surface, that planer is going to engage, and then you just let the line out. Um, and, and that's really it. So, all right, we're going to move on to the second method. Okay, so the next method is going to be uh, very similar, uh, same rod and reel, same concept. However, this is going to be a quick release system. So everything remains the exact same except for whenever that planer comes up to the rod tip, you can actually remove the planer now from the, the main line and then you can keep reeling in. So this is literally just to add a little bit of the sport factor to the first system also to remove any hand lining now what i mean by the quick release system is you have a planer just like before same exact concept however there is a quick release system here where you can just open these up and remove this from the line so it's the same thing except instead of having snap swivels i have these quick release okay and on the main line i'll show you here in a second after i get it out so let's go ahead and get the bait out just for demonstration purposes, I have a sea witch over a squid, but no bait on there, not yet. You're gonna go ahead and send out your bait, just like you would uh, on the first system. And this is 100 feet of 50 pound fluoro or mono, but it's attached to the reel itself instead of having to uh, put it on a yo-yo. But you have a bridle system here and I'll show you what that is up close so attached to the reel or I'm sorry attached to the main line 100 feet back is this now this is something that I will put I'll put a video on how to build this in the link in the description below so you can take a look at that video that I'll make on how to build this and how to build the actual uh, planer itself um, which is very simple I'll just show you how to do it but this is what is attached to your main line and this bridle here opens up on the ends. So you can get this planer on here, just like this. Snaps on, there. Snaps on here, it's easier when, when the line is tight on the rod. And then the same thing, it's able to engage. And when a fish strikes, it straightens out and you reel it up streamlined and then when this gets to the rod tip you can quickly remove this planer system 
This is still attached to your line, just like that, and then you can keep reeling all the way to the lure. And this will go through your through your conventional reel. So again, same setup, same reel, same braid, everything's the same, except you're gonna add this first from onto your braid, then you're gonna add your 100 feet leader to your lure, and that's the system. So attached, we have, um, attached we have it already so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and attach our quick release system onto the line very simple go over here attach it make sure it's attached good and you're ready to go so now we can go ahead and uh, send this out Gas, get the planer out there. We want it slowly engage. This is a number three planer, so it's gonna be a little more resistance than that number one. Get it in there, get that drag just where it's barely creeping out or barely not creeping out, and uh, you're good to go. So, again, when a fish strikes you're going to notice that the, the line is going to go the line is going to go slack real quick it's going to pop up or the rod is going to pop up and then it's going to uh, go back down because then the fish is going to be on there and when that happens you just reel up like normal until you get to that planer so i'm going to go ahead and pop that planer just to kind of show what it is so we're fighting a fish we're fighting a fish okay Planer gets to the rod tip. Fish is still on there. Preferably somebody else is on the boat right now and is able to come over here for you real quick and pop this off. But you're gonna pop this off real quick. Fish is still on, boom, it's off. Now you can keep on fighting that fish the rest of the way, all the way through the through the, through the uh, rod and reel. So this is a sportier uh, method. Um, is, it, is it any more effective than the first method? No, they're both the same. They both have the same uh, effectiveness. They're both going to catch fish. This just allows you to fight the, the whole way with the rod and reel, which is my preference. Because again, I like the sportier methods. Um, but that's it. So, um, again, with this method, if you have any questions about it, uh, comment below. Remember, I'm gonna have a video link in the description below on how you can build this, how you can build um, the bridle itself, and um, you'll be able to incorporate this into your into your arsenal. Um, again, very solid method. It gets the bait down, and uh, you catch fish. You know, especially in the summertime when those water temperatures get nice and hot, uh, the fish like to be in the cooler water. Just how we migrate to air conditioning, they migrate. To, it's their air conditioning, so. That's an important thing to remember. Um, all right, so the third and final tactic, which is coming up, that's my personal favorite. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and show you that now. Okay, now on to my personal favorite. This is what's called the poor man's downrigger, okay? What I have here, and this will also, how I build this whole system will be on in a separate video. Um, the link will be in the description below. I'll make a video on how to make this system. But this system is gonna be, um, much different than the other two and what you do here is this is going to be designed to uh be put into the water and it's not going to be on your rod and reel this is going to be cleated off to one of the cleats on your on your stern of your boat so you're basically going to put this in the water and once you do it once you put it in the water once you set it and forget it it's going to be down there in the water the whole time if you catch a fish this stays there um, until the end of the day you reel this up and you're done so what you're going to do is um you're going to want to put the boat in 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 idle okay and you're gonna put it in gear but keep it in idle because um, this has a lot of resistance on it and you don't want to lose this so we're gonna go ahead and set this in the water this is um, a hundred feet of 250 pound mono line on a number six planer okay um, you can make these however you want there'll be a separate video I'll explain more of that but this planer is gonna get me down about 40 feet. So um, this is gonna be down 40 feet in the water. 
And then what's gonna happen is on this main line, after it's set, I'm gonna have a separate line and that separate line is gonna be gonna be on a, a on a quick release on a uh, similar to like an outrigger clip where once a fish bites that main line that clip is gonna break which I use rubber bands and then you have a fish on on a separate rod and reel so it's way sportier um, in my opinion it's the funnest method and uh, once you get it down it's pretty easy to do so let's go ahead and I'll go ahead and show you this boats and gear I'm gonna go ahead and just set the planer in the water here. Get it in the in a set position, which is gonna be like this. Once it catches, you're good to go. I'm just gonna let it out. Let the line out. Let the line out. Let it do its thing. Okay. And you know, once you get close to the end, you wanna add a little more pressure on it. But you're just letting that planer out. You're gonna to want to keep this on a yo-yo. It just keeps it very organized, very easy to put in and out of the water, and it keeps it organized in your tackle box too. You know. Planter's getting pretty close to the end here. We're gonna to want to pay attention as we get here. Make sure we don't lose this. I'm gonna take a cleat on your boat. Heavy-duty snap swivel. I think this is a 500-pound swivel. And you're going to want to make sure it's on that cleat good, okay? So it's cleated off right now um, on this cleat here, and it's in the water. So that line is now in the water, and uh, it's down. It's, it's down for the day until I pull it up. I don't need to pull it up anymore. And the reason why I say that is because we're going to fish a separate rod and reel with a separate lure. Um, you can use any rod and reel you want. Um, I, use, I use spinning gear here. And then what you're going to do is you're going to use, you're going to incorporate rubber bands and a double coast lock snap swivel. So there's two different snap swivels connected by a barrel swivel in the middle. Okay. And that's what you're going to use here. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that. Now, depending on depending on which bait uh, you choose, if you're pulling a heavier lure, you're going to want to use a number 64 rubber band. If you're pulling something lighter, like a smaller Clark spoon or something like that, you can use a number 32 rubber band. Um, for this and what's going to happen is you're going to attach this to your main line after you put it out and um, When the fish bites it's going to pull that rubber band Which is going to allow the hook to set at the strongest point and then it's going to snap Okay, the rubber band's going to snap releasing the line releasing your fighting line from the downrigger line And now you're free to go downrigger stays down and you're fighting a fish on a separate rod and reel So that's why this is my favorite method now. I have no planers to worry about for the rest of the time It's, it's just like fighting a fish any other way Okay, I'm gonna send out my lure of choice. Right now, I'm just gonna send a, a tuna whacker out there. So you're just gonna send it out like you would any other any other line. Set it out however far you want back. I like to put about 100 feet. 
um, you know, making make sure that that lure doesn't tangle with your downrigger line, obviously, or your uh, your planer line. But you're gonna set that out as far as you as far as you want to put it out. Okay. When you get to the point where you are happy with where it is, you're gonna take your rubber band, okay? And you're gonna attach it to your line. Let me show you how to do this here. Okay? You're gonna take the rubber, you're gonna take your main line, make a loop like this. You're gonna go through the loop with your rubber band, like the, basically so your rubber band is hanging on it just like that. You're gonna reach through, grab the other side, and pull it through, okay? Just like that. You're gonna grab your fingers close to the rubber band and line, just give it a quick, give it a quick pull, but it has to be close, okay? That way it doesn't break. Now your rubber band is attached to your main line and it shouldn't slip. It's actually in a perfect spot. You're gonna take your double coast lock, swivel like I showed you, put one side on there, close it, okay? Then you're gonna take your uh, other side of the swivel, you're gonna go down, put it on the line of the downrigger, just like that, okay? Just like that. When that's set, you're gonna open up the bale and send it down. The force from the water is going to push that down, that line, as you're moving the boat, okay? Now keep in mind, this is very important. You wanna put, if this is a 100 feet line on this downrigger line, you want to, you don't want to go over a hundred feet on your, on this line. Okay. And the reason is, is because you won't know it. The line is not going to stop coming out whenever it gets to the end of the planer. Okay. Because the, it's, what's going to happen is the line is just going to bow in the water. Okay. So it's important that you don't put out too much. Um, so now what's going to happen is when a fish bites, that rubber band, like I showed you, is going to pull. It's going to set the hook on that bait, and it's going to break. And then the rubber band is going to separate. Because it breaks, it's going to separate the line from the planer, and now you're totally separate. And now you're just fighting the fish from this rod and reel. The planer stays down. You're good to go. When, you, when you're done, all you do, after you catch that fish and you want to send another one out, all you do is put a new st uh, double snap swivel and uh, you send another bait out. At the end of the day, if you caught a lot of fish, there's gonna be a bunch of these down at the end of your uh, your planer setup. Um, so that's a good thing. You know, if you catch 10 fish, you're gonna have 10 of these swivels. And that's really it. So, you know, um, you know, like I said, this is a, a very good tactic. Right now I have this bait down probably 30 to 40 feet below the surface. And um, there's really no other method to do that. You can use downriggers, but downriggers have their own uh, set of problems that you do when you're trolling at higher speeds. Which with this, I'd go up to eight knots, no problem with this setup. And uh, I can go five knots, eight knots, however fast I want to go. And, um, you know, I catch a lot of fish this way. And, um, you know, I know a lot of people aren't doing this right now, and, and I, I think it's a shame because you're leaving so much fish potential on the table by not by not incorporating this method. So, like I said, I highly encourage you to try this in the comment section below. Uh, you know, let me know if you have any questions. I'll have I'll be happy to answer anything. You know, I if I need to make another video to clarify things, I will. I don't mind. Also, do me a favor. You know, I put a lot of work and effort into these videos. Um, if you can, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. I'm trying to grow. I want to put out a ton of videos in the future and, uh, I'll do that. And, you know, I just want the channel to grow. So please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. And, uh, good luck out there. I hope you guys catch a big one this way.